Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today with us is our esteemed Northeast Kingdom reporter, Robin Smith from the Orleans County Record. Welcome to the show, Robin. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think it's the last show you were on. You were on my radio show, and I referred to you as the queen of the reporters of the Northeast Kingdom, but you corrected me. I did. Tina Starr probably does have it, and you know, yeah. while I'm friends with you, I, have to, I actually hero worship Tina because I worked at the Chronicle, yeah. and I learned everything I know uh, from her. So. You know, you're either the esteemed or you're the princess. The well, I mean, for two reasons. Tina, <clears throat> I left the, the area to work in uh, southern Vermont and then moved back. Right. She didn't do that, and, um, so, and she's now the editor of the you, Chronicle, so I consider her the queen. You know what's interesting in the newspaper world, and I'm, I'm not a newspaper reporter. I write history, but... We're all steaming towards old age. There's, yep. it's, it's a, well, especially you folks in the newspaper, it's, it's a tough field. Yes. And you're not able to get new reporters to come on. And so, you, you know, there's- It's not a field that young people tend to get into um, in small rural papers anyway. Um, uh, maybe back in the day, yes, but um, what, People don't read, young people don't read newspapers the way they used to, and we can't expect that they're going to. So I would say m more and more it's an, it's an old, uh, old person's field right. and gray hair abounds. But that in its own way is good because there's a lot of institutional knowledge in all the people that work for the newspapers in the area. So. Well, and, and the thing is, is we do have our vast fortunes from being in such a lucrative field. Yeah, not. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll just throw a plug in. While I'm saying that the industry is uh, changing because of online uh, access, if, you, if somebody still wants to know a definitive story about what's happening, you can go online and find out what the gossip is. But if you want to know what the facts are and who said it and where it came from, people still go to newspapers right, to right. get that. And it'll be unfortunate when that disappears. Right. You know, um, if it does. Uh, today we're, we're kind of talking about the upcoming elections, particularly in Newport. Um, but um, w so we're just going to chat about that. But. When I was with the Chronicle, my major beat was Derby, but occasionally I would do Newport and do other other towns. And uh, I actually have a lot of fond memories of doing it. And I know you do a lot of Newport, yeah. Yeah. and you do some Derby. Um, I it's it's kind of disheartening to watch watch a minority of the towns governments falling into a bit of disarray and some people might say failed leadership or at least a misunderstanding of what their role was because uh, I look back 15, 20 years, the, the, uh, the meetings were much more civil and they were not so, well, they just weren't so chaotic. Have you seen that over the years? Um, <clears throat> it depends, I think, on um, who's, who's governing the meetings, first of all. And the nature of the criticism is also a factor, um, and also the issues. When um, when Derby was f was dealing with um, the uh, plans for two large wind turbines right. on the hills above the interstate where the I ninety one crosses the border, boy, were those meetings hot and. The selectmen had trouble keeping it under control. They had to institute um, two minutes. Everybody only had two minutes. If you got hot and yelled, they'd ask you to step out. Most people respected it. When the issue was done, though, things went back to normal. Right. Normal being more collegial, very little argument. Um, sure, people came in with things they were upset about, but it wasn't really a challenge to to the board or whatever. Um, what you're referring to is um, the kind of ongoing difficulty that the city council and the mayor and, and, and in Barton also, where um, the people who are on the boards, 
an in the administration in some cases in Barton it's the zoning administrator it's taking some heat she, the wife of right now departing um, selectman Bob Croto um, where they're under constant criticism from some people in the community and at some point people on the boards get kind of ticked off they they've like had it up to here some and sometimes they deserve the criticism but it's really hard to do a volunteer job when somebody's always on you all the time and so I think that's part of what goes on um, it it gets to be the animosity is hard to get past and in Newport it spills out on social media a lot more than I've noticed uh, right. not aware of it being so much like that in Barton but there it may well be and I'm just not tuned into it but in Newport, social media has been really um, negative about the administration, um, targeting the mayor, targeting the city manager, um, to the point where they have responded in the city town re city report, uh, which is, I believe you said was, you just don't remember it ever happening. Uh, all right, my, uh, my uh, uh, history is I write history. I have gone through, throughout the years, hundreds of town uh, annual reports, and I have never seen anything so bizarre as the annual, as the, as the minutes from a portion of the mayor and the city manager. I've actually showed it to people who are in kind of like the know, and it's like, where along the way did anybody tell them, take a deep breath, step back, because they've really, I look at it and, you know, I've done some pretty foolish things in my life. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. A lot of times if I write something, I will write it. I might print it out. And then usually by that point, I slap myself, say, what are you thinking? Where did where didn't that catch on because they've been that those what they wrote is is gonna you know at least haunt their reputations because it, it basically said you know I understand I understand their frustration yeah. I because I served in the state house if you remember yeah thankfully before there was a lot of social media but when you serve you should not be a pincushion but yet on the other hand You've got to use some kind of reason. And when that was written, they used no reason. Well, one of the problems with uh, what's in the town report, of a city report, is, um, you know, it's partly a look back on the year and w the good things and things they're working on. And then there's the reference to the criticism and how social media criticism isn't healthy and it isn't nice and this and that. Um, but... I, I kind of think that the, the challenge for somebody who writes something in a, an annual report, this is going to sit on the shelf in the city for the city's entire existence. Right. This is not a memo to the council from the city right. manager. This isn't the mayor's opening statements at or, a meeting. Or that, even in a newspaper. Uh, a letter to the editor saying, um, gee, you know, I wish people would knock it off. It's hard to do my work when everybody's being so, you know, be critical without being mean. Right. You know, there's ways to do that. Um, so I think because it's in the city report and you can't respond to it and you can't take it back, it's it's nailed in concrete, yeah. and uh, or you know it's it's more than in a tree. It's it's in concrete. It's going to last forever, and it's that's why people are a little upset about it. I think, right. yeah. or surprised at it. I think. Well, I think I, I think because of in part because of the juvenile nature of it. Uh, you know, I think people are used to seeing that kind of stuff on social media, and maybe even in letters. Uh, yeah, I, but in social media, you can take it down if you think better of it. Right. Uh, you can't take it out of the city report. It's out there, and it's going to always be out there. Now, first so. of all, let me uh, say, too, 
I am not a dirt. I am not a Newport resident. I was born and raised in Newport. My family's been here for generations. I live in Derby, but my heart is still in Newport, and I'm still. You know, I I actually have somebody. Some people roll their eyes. I actually think, or or at least accuse me of having rose-colored glasses. I think Newport has so much promise. Uh, I think I think the location. I think it's. I think it's outstanding. I think some positive things have happened. But as you know, I, I work a lot with the outside media, whether it's outside of this area or other parts of the country, or even some, some reporters come from around the world. They're not coming to talk to me. They're, they contact me. Sometimes they want to talk to me, but I help them find people to interview. Mm-hmm. And... What, what some of these people, including some of our leaders, don't understand the world is watching us through the, through the eyes of, you know, through the, the voice of the media. And so just because you have the media's attention doesn't mean you have to whine and complain. And, and everybody's hearing all this. And, and I think personally, I think some of it is stymieing progress because, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I'm not quite certain who who I can send. The, you know, if, if I have a foreign or if a foreign or another member of the press from another part of the country yeah. on who to talk to, because I don't want them just to just to complain. Because I think we have so much optimism. Um, the hole you call it a vacant lot, I call it a hole. Is well, it's a. Yeah, if you were thinking about it, if it was left over from a fire, I'd call it a cellar hole. Right. That hasn't. Um, it was taken down methodically. All the bad stuff was taken out. The asbestos, the right. lead, it's ready to be built. So right. it like a vacant lot. Most people think of it as like paved right. and ready to go. But in the in the particular way that developers think of it, there's not. You just start building on it. It's pretty right. well ready. And uh, so in that sense, you know, that's why I think of it more as uh, it's, and I have, uh, to me, the whole has a negative no, connotation. And, 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 I, and, I and I'm, agree. I work hard not to, uh, I get splinters from sitting on a fence trying not to take sides. Right. So, so um, to say, well, the da- future downtown development location, well, that's maybe too rosy. The whole is too negative, so I think of it as just no, vacant lots. And I, actually, and te- technically, you are right, and I think yeah. uh, you really are. Is but here's the deal: you and I know the whole, the vacant lot is there. A lot of the locals do. We make a big deal out of it, maybe too much. I'm not saying not to work on it. Right, it's got to be dealt with. My my cousin, I was recently having. Uh, um, a meal with her at one of New, uh, Main Street's fine dineries, uh, Dusset Thai. And my cousin from Connecticut hadn't been up here. And I said, Shannon, I said, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about Main Street? She actually thought it was really cute. You know, there, there were some empty storefronts. And I asked her, and I, I termed these words, I said, what do you think about the hole? What was her response? She didn't notice it. Did didn't she? notice it. Yeah. is we as locals notice it. And I'm not saying we should forget it, but, you know, there's more to conversations. Like when I hear, you know, we're, New, uh, Gardner Park is in need of work. So when I, start, when I start seeing that they're raising money for Gardner Park, all of a sudden on social media, well, why don't they spend the money on the whole? Why don't they? Can't. It's not, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the thing. Because the city owns Gardner Park. The city and citizens can invest in Gardner Park. Right. And having that outdoor recreation, the uh, bridge that got local permit approval uh, across Scotts Cove, that'll right. con- connect the Bluffside Farm with Prouty Beach right. and uh, create a walking and bike path over there. That's awesome. That'll link up to uh, the border, through the right. BB Spur right, bike right. trail. I mean, these are things that local people and 
people who aren't in development and aren't connected to Jay Peaks, uh, the the uh, the guy who has control over that in the wake of the EB5 scandal, a, a court appointed receiver they call him, but um, the sale of that property, if it's sold, who buys it? City's going to have not a lot of control about no. what happens. They can help guide it. They can work with the certain kind of development agencies to offer grants and, and uh, incentives, tax incentives for developers. This all can happen, but who ultimately takes that property or pieces of it? It's not going to be, the council isn't going to make a vote and have it happen. And a lot of locals think that that could happen. No. It's not going to happen. No. Um, so we have an election coming up here in Newport. Yep. And, uh, and I think the, the big surprise, it, it even took me a little bit by surprise, I think it took you, was the departure of uh, Julie Raboyne, who's been on this show yep. more than once. It's, did that surprise you? I mean, yes, but I was surprised when you decided not to run again, too, after being in, was it four years? Four years. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes people, I mean, they have lives. They ha get a taste of something um, and decide. Tim DeLabier was only on for a short while. He, he got a taste of it. He really did a good job, was a lot of people thought. But then he decided that he wasn't going to. So... Um, and I think that's fine. I mean, if she has other interests, she might come back to the city in another form. That's great, you know. And, um, yeah, because uh, I tell people sometimes it's like for myself, I find I can better serve the region, not as a representative, but through my various uh, forums and just through helping yeah. helping people. Um, the uh, I will tell you this about Julie. We go way back. And even when I've disagreed with her decisions, uh, I've had, I've typically had tremendous respect for her. And I think in this particular case, I think she's had a hard, uh, she's had a hard fought battle against a sometime misguided uh, leadership. So this gets on to who, so we now have Kevin uh, Charbonneau. Incumbent. Right, incumbent. He's seeking to be reelected to his seat right and uh, because of the way it works there's five people running for two open seats julie's seat that she's leaving it's not hers once you're up for election but that's the one she was in her terms up kevin's charbonneau's terms up then you have three new newcomers to city politics elective politics um you have chris fashion who's a teacher in at the derby elementary school you have uh, Amy Gillespie, who um, she's a behavioral specialist, uh, a mom, and is interested, got active in the ATV issue um, because she wanted to see a vote on it, right. and she got it. And um, Carl King, who's been interested in veterans affairs and um, has some other ideas that he's promoting. So these are all people. Uh, it's interesting because... Did you forget somebody? Oh, of course, John Wilson. John Wilson, come well, on. Well, I was, it, uh, and, and uh, John, if you see this, I apologize. Yeah. But I was thinking of John in the context of the incumbent group right. because he was a longtime alderman. Right. And um, he um, lost when he ran a couple of different ways um, and just lost running for mayor by a couple of votes. So, right. um, yeah, he... Um, there are several people who would like to, um, if elected, that among the newcomers, if elected, uh, Carl King and and Amy would like to see a new city manager. John Wilson was critical in the past and, and is reaffirming that about um, some of the things uh, that Laura Dolgan did when he was on the council four years ago. But he did not come out and say what he would do. I'm not going to say so, what they should do, but the, the city does need a new tone. Is It certainly needs a new tone. Well, I mean, uh, based on the negativity that keeps happening, and, there are, it, it, and the, the trouble with the negativity is that it over 
it supersedes the good things that are happening. Oh, there's a lot like it, it gets in the way of the good things. Right. So that that's all that some people talk about is the the yeah 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 stuff, and and that you know you could get rid of that. And you know what quick. is I am kind of tough on some of the leadership, but there's also there's also some of the uh, uh, citizens. They've also got to. There's some people I think that get a little carried away, you know, because you can you can state your opinion, but you can still stay you can stay civil. Um, but I think once you get a new tone of leadership, whether it be our current leadership decides to uh, become a little bit more civil, or new leader, uh, or you know, new leaders. Um, and and by the way. I am not talking about everybody. You got some fine, upstanding people because you know what? As I said, I've served. It's a thankless job. I commend every single one of those people for wanting to serve. Would I serve in this day of social media? Absolutely not. As I, as I told you, I have thick skin. If I had been, if I had served in the days of social media, my wife would be serving a very long <laughs> jail sentence because yeah. she can badmouth me all day. So here's nobody the thing. Else can. I, I, I encourage everybody, not just the leadership, to, but the people who are commenting, to be civil. You can, you can disagree, but be civil about it. These are people, uh, and that doesn't, you know, I, I have strong opinions, but I, I try to remain civil. Yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, you look at what uh, has been going on. Like Barton's had turnover for years now because people can't are constantly at each other. And uh, and um, the, the um, long-time members don't want to change how they've been doing it because the new ones want to do things differently. And, oh, my gosh, it just goes on and on. So, uh, but... It, I'll tell you, every municipality goes through these cycles. It's just that social media has exa exaggerates it. It makes it more intense. And um, you know, like people said, you know, talk to me face to face and we'll hash it out. But being trashed online, what you can't defend yourself, like you just shut it off and right. don't listen to it. But it's circulating. Right. People used to talk about stuff like that at the coffee shop. Or over a beer afterwards. I've often, I mean, it's all I've the often, same. yeah, I've often wondered about that. Is before social media, did some of this? Were these people? I mean, in general, I don't mean just on town politics. I mean anything. Things that you see posted on Facebook. Was that really rattling around in their brains? Before? Oh yes, it just be, took longer be, to be, get be, somewhere. That's so. all. <laughs> um, but you know, to be fair to, to community leaders, though, I, I used to love going to some of these little towns like one one town i always got sent to well um when i was with the chronicle i loved going westfield westfield you had like tina's uh father eves daigle who's been there since about the town time the town was founded he's been involved for so long so you had you had the old farmers but then you had the uh then you had like uh the back to the land people then you had just the the, the newcomers and it all everybody intermeshed and it was it, it was a great experience i loved that and and then on town meeting day as you know it's like a smorgasbord of of food at some of these small yeah. towns you go out to charleston and there's a whole spread of homemade food and yeah so so uh i think these bigger towns like barton and newport they they're not as um, they're a little more complicated, I believe, and and I think well, and they've lost Newport never had a strong floor meeting, right. and so there's no real um, place to hash all this out. So all these things that sometimes people talked about at their annual floor meeting, the right. annual meeting. Um, ends up at the city council meeting. So sometimes it interferes with the business of the board and they do have to get work done. So in order to prevent it from going four hours every, mon every second Monday, you know, twice a month, um, 
they have to they have to work to control the discussion and they've had some pretty interesting issues i mean over the years the water meter discussions um there's been there's always discussion about the police department and, and uh, safety in the city. Um, you know, the ATV is the most recent issue. Um, and then there's the individual interests of local residents that come up at meetings, you know, so I go keeps my, you busy. I grew up largely involved in some form because my father was long-term member of the, uh, uh, of, uh, the planning commission and he was more of a pain in the butt than I was, and I'm proud of it. Your father and people who know um, his dad was the only citizen who attended the first hearing I went to in like 2002 or maybe right. three, when they were talking about expanding the landfill back then. Yeah. He was the only one who stood up and said, you know, this is crazy, we shouldn't have it here. Well, like, 15 years later other people noticed this yep. and it became a, a cause celeb and because i would like of, to say i was because a of so, but yes but because of social media community groups form better and they have a chance to communicate but things that took so long to call and to interact with now it's like zip zip it's quick people are um, more, better organized and it puts challenges on the governmental agencies and the boards because they're dealing with people who've spent some time getting ready and they come in and if the board's not ready to handle it or doesn't know how to handle things right. which is often just I don't know what how to handle these people coming at me then um, then you get the conflict that's right. the challenge you know I'll say this I don't always agree with my father on political issues, but I will say this, the one thing we have is we champion the underdog. And that's how come when I record history, I record the history of ordinary people who sometimes have lived extraordinary lives. Yep. Uh, my father watched how the system was sometimes rigged against the ordinary person, but if you went in for a permit and you had a, the right name, had yeah. right on through and my I will say I'm yeah. very proud of my father he uh, he stuck to his guns and uh, and so in my words of closing um, yes the last like three to you know the last say maybe 10 years has been kind of tough for Newport but I'm going to be the eternal optimist I'm seeing other towns come back to life one town slightly outside the kingdom I, I just, you know, I was just asking people, how, what happened here? Morrisville. Morrisville, have you been through Morrisville? Not lately, no. It's a happening place. And from what I understand, everybody got on the same page and started working together. Maybe not agreeing, but being mm -hmm. civil, working together. If you ever, I, I, I encourage you to go down to, to Morrisville and, and see how, what, working together mm -hmm. can really do because yeah. I'm the eternal optimist for the, for the city of Newport. I want to see it succeed, but I also think we need to set a new tone over the airways. I think we need to set a new tone on social media and I think I think uh, voters also deserve it. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. So you're going to take any predictions? You're going to take not, all Not one. You know what? Is, I'm not. <laughs> it's a, not my business. You I, go ahead, but I'm not. I'm not it. a betting mm. man because when I go to Las Vegas, when I pass through to Arizona, I allow myself. You know, they roll out the red carpet for me because once they hear I'm willing to spend up to forty dollars before Ooh, walking away, do do, eh? <laughs> I'll spend forty dollars. Uh, so in other words, I'm not a betting man. I think we have some good, some good candidates. Um, I, you know, I. I think, um, personally, I think it's time for, our, I, I think it's time in some form to encourage younger people to be stepping forward. Like um, you take the, um, you take even, they're not in politics, but Andrea Carbine in Vero Rancor, the founders of Wednesdays on the Waterfront, look what that youth did mm -hmm. that that great event so 
um, so if you if these younger people are not going to serve on the the boards, that doesn't mean they can't serve. Those two women have right. done more for this city. The other thing that uh, is driving doing a good job is the recreation committee is active in Newport, and they're not political. Right. I mean, and, the, and they're getting people to buy into this. Yes, we're going to have a, like a splash park down in the park, which a lot of people would love to see that. I, as an adult, I'd love to go in the evening and put my toes in it on a hot day. I mean, I look forward to it, and I, you know, I can say that that's a positive thing, and I'd love to see it. I know, uh, and I, I know that the uh, downtown group, they are, I believe they're getting more active. Uh, Steve Wright, the uh, general manager of JP, is on it. And yep. by the way, is he would, uh, Steve, if you're li- if you don't listen, but I, I have for the last several years tried to encourage Steve to run for, for mayor. <laughs> so uh, he's but, probably got his hands full until Jay Peak sells and stuff. You know, there, there's a lot of issues up there. You ever thought about moving to Newport, taking off your reporter's hat and running? You you probably know the ins and outs I better couldn't than... do that. I am have spent so much time trying not to be opinionated, and you have to be to do that kind of a job. And it would be very hard for me to switch over. Do you? All right. I know journalists do that, but I'm not. Do gonna... you? Are, are you optimistic like me for the future of Newport? If the- Absolutely. Well, I when I lived in Bennington, um, and I knew eventually I was going to move back to this area, and um, I used to drive through Newport because the, the state office building was there, and you could see the waterfront, the old buildings that blocked the view. It was so pretty, and I could imagine working in Newport again after working there like years, decades earlier. And I had the opportunity to come back, and I was grateful for it. And I just think, like, that was a great opportunity, the building, the construction of that building in the 90s. Um, Like, you got the waterfront. You're not very far from snowmobile and ATV trails. They're coming right downtown. How awesome is that? Great restaurants, like Pick and Shovel, some other nice stores. I mean, it's just a great place you can come in spend an evening go a little shopping you know it's a lovely place to live and work i think yeah um yeah and yeah do we need to improve yeah we need you know we need more well, moderate retail moderate. is struggling too because um it's any retail store from walmart down to the little guys are dealing with the online presence of shopping and that is going to play out how it's going to happen i don't know but many people still want to go in and touchy-feely on the stuff they buy you know uh the newport um, natural foods market and restaurant that's the kind of thing that is not going to be outsourced to online shopping because it's just you've got to go in and get it yourself it makes it different here's the thing too is sometimes us old people um we 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 live in the past so much we we live when people talk and here i am right in history and i'm kind of and i'm even saying this main street of yesterday with the discount stores on main street and everything that was going on those days are done those days are done and no nobody drove them off it was the change it was the railroad leaving uh this country like in in the the interstate there was so many factors but in saying that those days are done that doesn't mean newport cannot rise no because because unlike some other little towns that are totally dependent on one business or um some other factor and the fact that's what created them and you know they would sort of shrivel up without it newport has it's it's a um it's a th- drive through town because people have to go through there which means that there's a lot of people in and out all the time it has the high school it has the lake it now has access through bike trails and other kinds of trails if that continues um i just see all that as like taking advantage of newport 
Newport's natural location, which is just perfect. It, I think that people have to understand that it is not like Burlington. It is a four-season, five-season town. And therefore, you, you're not going to get the waterfront use in the way that you do on Champlain, which sometimes doesn't freeze. So people are out on the lake a lot more. It, so there's a narrower summer season, but you can be out on the water a lot more than well, what some people... You can be people, out right now, as in it's frozen water, but, well, but yeah. there's a lot of people out on that, that body of water. Um, because this area... Like, this isn't the first time, you know, every once in a while, when you write history, you kind of chuckle when people think they're inventing something, when actually they're reinventing something. Yeah. The turn of the last century, this area, I mean, the Northeast Kingdom, was so poverty-stricken. Uh, because we are a poor section where, where poverty, when I say poverty, I mean financially poor, and not yeah. so many other ways, yeah. we're so rich. But there was a movement in the early, to uh, the early part of the last century, to brand this area for its hunting and fishing. That's how come we, the state stocked all kinds of fish. That's how come our fishing so is so good yeah. here because we just we wanted to. Uh, well, that's how come the name the Northeast Kingdom arose. It wasn't by chance. It was over a several year period because they wanted to brand it, to make it known. And um, so, so this whole brand in an area has been going on for at least 100 years and trying to find our niche. And sometimes we have run from our very, from what, you know, we've focused so much on what we don't have, we don't focus on what we do have. Right. It's like when I write history, I'm proud to say not everybody likes, because you know, when you write the history of an area, it isn't always, it isn't only white fences and white steepled churches. Sometimes there's some pretty gnarly stuff in yep. there, but it, that's history. Yeah. So um, it's great to have you on and uh, won't be long and uh, we will be into a, uh, well, we actually are in the presidential year. And yep. uh, the primary in Vermont is next week or whenever, uh, town meeting day actually. Right. And uh, so uh, I'm sure uh, politics will be heating up. So it's about time to get off, time for me to get off social media a little bit uh, because I never, I never post, as a business person, I never post direct, as in uh, especially national politics. If you, when you're in business, the surest way to lose your customers is tell people how to vote. <laughs> And I don't do that. I let people make up their yeah, likewise their own minds. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Glad and, to uh, be here. And uh, I, I'm not a betting man, but I, I have some ideas who might uh, might win. But I will say this: I hope those are those who are sincere in serving, really sincere that they want to serve. If they lose, I hope they don't disappear, because there's there's ways to. Uh, serve your community without actually serving on the yeah the board you don't of have Alderman. to be elected there's many ways yeah and, and sometimes it's it's you can serve better yeah. by not being constrained by a uh, the rules of a board okay thank you for uh, thank you for coming on and thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom voice. Mm -hmm.